Welcome to the Love City Arts Podcast. I'm Andre in the Flow. I wanted to create a space where artists could come together and encourage all of humanity through the arts. So welcome to that space. Our next live event is November 19th in the West Village of New York City. For more information, to follow my journey and the journey of all of our artists, visit andreintheflow.com and lovecityarts.org. Please enjoy today's episode and thanks for listening. Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome back to another episode, episode three of the Love City Arts Podcast. I'm here on our part, third part and final part uh, on this go round with our guest, Jean Lachey Ellis, also known as Jeannie's Wanderlust. Jeannie's Wanderlust. And so you can find her on social media and connect there uh, if you've enjoyed what you've heard. Um, over the last two weeks, and hopefully you'll enjoy what you're hearing today. Uh, just want to jump right back in from last week's episode. If you haven't had an opportunity to catch the last two episodes with Jean Lachey Ellis, um, be sure to listen to our Love City podcast wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. i let you know that we're now available on SoundCloud, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, Apple Podcasts, and the Overcast app as well. Um, so we look forward to hearing your comments and feedback. Rate us up. Uh, rate us high. If you really, really enjoy what you're hearing here, it helps us rank within all of the podcast ranking systems, and then it grows our audience so more people can benefit from the work of Love for the Arts. I founded Love for the Arts. I'm Andre in the flow, by the way. And I founded Love for the Arts as, a, as an encouragement platform to encourage all of humanity through the arts. And so that's why... Jean and I are here today to just talk about some of the things that matters uh, to us on a heart level and how we are healing our heart through the use of art. And on the end of the last episode, we were starting to uh, engage with the idea that everything that you need in order to heal your heart or to heal your life or to get your life back on track, um, it's already within yourself. And so we were talking about tools of self-love and acceptance. And Jean, what are some of those tools that you found really, really handy in your Swiss Army knife of life? Um, one, I do want to catch on to the fact that how did I discover these tools that were always in me? Mm. So I, um, I, I recently got a picture of from my aunt of me playing the piano at about, I want to say I was two. And it kind of just like touched on me that I've been an artist my whole life. I've mm. danced, I've drawn, I've sang, I've acted, I've painted. Um, I've been drawing pretty much my whole life. That's very uh, therapeutic to me. That's been one of my tools. I've been dancing since I was born. <laughs> That's been another tool to me. Um, actually, funny thing, uh, uh, um, when I was like three, my, <laughs> my aunt had came into the house and she was, um, she was talking about something and you know the minds of a child. And I was just in there and she's like, at the right one, she was talking about somebody harassing her, I believe. And then I come out into the living room, and I'm like, you got the right one, baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, that's when I realized, um, but no, now that I reflect, I realize using these tools to my whole life bring joy and laughter to other people. My family laughed at me when I was three. So those are my tools and my outlets to self healing And I also use those to heal and love on people externally, whether I'm joking around, whether I'm singing, whether I'm dancing, whether I'm acting, whether I'm drawing. Those are my tools to help me heal and to also help others heal. That's wonderful. Um, you know, it's, it's amazing how sometimes putting on the right song can just lift your mood. Um, one of the ones that comes to mind, or even singing a song can lift your mood, but one of my favorite songs to listen to and to sing is Patti LaBelle's I Think About You. Um, that song, for some reason, just puts me in a happy place. 
Also, uh, Natalie Cole's This Will Be, um, An Everlasting Love. This will be. Everlasting Love. It just, yes. It's one of those songs that from the moment that I hear it come on the radio, it's, it's one of my tools that kind of brings me back. And I'm like, oh, you know what? Life isn't so crappy. You know, life isn't so bad. Or, you know, my day isn't so bad. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, yeah, music and, and dance can be uh, an amazing tool. And it's awesome to hear that you use that to find your self-love um, and acceptance and kind of bridge the gap between your younger mm-hmm. joyful self and the joyful person that you're trying to be today. Um, was it easy um, to be known as an artist in the family? Oh, no. (laughs) We were talking about this like a couple of days ago, and I was saying that um, I'll never forget, and this is probably like the funniest thing ever, now that I look back on it, but it was so traumatic when I was a kid. Um, Uh I remember I used to draw everything. So I would draw Mickey Mouse. I would draw abstract art because I was wondering about abstract art. I'd draw... um, Dolphins, like real life dolphins. I was like a really, really good drawer. And I never forget. I went to my grandma's house, and she was like, "Why are you always drawing?" And I felt like drawing was therapeutic for me. And she was just like, "That's the devil's work." And at like nine years old, hearing that you drawing and that's the devil's work, I quickly picked up that book, tossed it out, and I did not draw for a very long time because she scared the mess out of me. And you know how there must Just drawing a picture of a dolphin was the devil's (laughs) work. Work, work. Like, I can't even imagine. And of course, uh, for those of you who don't know, Jean Lachey and I are cousins. Um, We share that grandmother. So I can't even imagine where she got such misinformation. (laughs) And, and, and it goes to show the, the ways in which people kind of use mental information, apply it to children or say it to children, and then they don't realize that it can perhaps, you know, reshape and retune and recalibrate the entire trajectory of your life. What if you were the next level mm-hmm. Picasso? What if I was, you know? So how did so, you overcome that, that barrier of, of artwork <laughs> as the devil's workshop? Um... I used to sneak and hide and draw <laughs> and pray about it. Like, oh, Lord, I hope that, you know, you you forgive me for doing this. And then I got wiser. Um, and then I got wiser. <laughs> and then I got wiser. And I just continued to do it to where it was no longer a secret. It was just like, this is what I'm doing. And, I, and as I got older, it just became something like, I guess she... I didn't do it around her, so it was no longer like, uh, it was no longer like something she could say because I'd do it on my own. And later on, like, she never brought it up again to me again, so. Yeah. But it went from (laughs) you. And so you're, you're drawing, you were also dancing. What other pieces of your artistry hang out within your, your history? My love of music. Um, thanks to you. <laughs> um, and just the, the connection with music. Music is in everything I do. Um, you, um, music has actually helped me heal. Um, in my darker days, um, from depression to non-depression, <laughs> um, to bring joy into my life, music has definitely healed me. Um, Andre finds his way to heal me on random days where he sends me his vocals that he stopped on something he's working on and he's like, um, I just felt like singing to you today. And he'll send me a video and I'll be like, in like full tears or full joy, but joyful tears. <laughs> um, because Are you sure that I'm not hitting all the notes on their side? So much, or so flat that it's not it's just causing you to cry because it's the worst no, thing you've ever heard. Um, I'm just checking. Absolutely. Sorry, I'm just so no, I'm not. you have, and I always told you, like, when I become a missus someday, <laughs> you are going mm-hmm. to sing me. Wow. Um, Andre has been singing to me since we were kids. Um, that is his tool. Um, music is his tool. Mm-hmm. Um, 
mean, I just have to say, um, <laughs> say it again. I said, let me stop giving your stuff out, like, because music is your No, tool. I wow. mean, that, I was just about to say, like, give it away. Give it away completely um, because I really fundamentally believe that the reason why we have these gifts, artistic or otherwise, is to give them away. And if for some reason uh, me sending a practice video or a practice clip of what I'm working on uh, within my artistry to you uplifts you, then you know, double point. I get to practice and I get to also um, shine light, uh, which is what we all yeah. want to do. Yeah, I, I was going to say that, you know, my mother tells me stories uh, that when I was little, um, you know, we were old school black people uh, in the South. Uh, and so we were not immune to whippings and spankings. And so sometimes I'd act out and I'd get a whipping and a spanking. You can't probably do that to kids these days. Um, back in the day, we got whipped. And she would say that, like, you know, after that happened, after that happened, um, about two to three minutes later, I'd be in the corner singing somewhere. She goes, you never stayed sad for very, very long. Within minutes, you were always singing again. And that's because singing has always been my connection to the divine, always in my way of plugging back into the source. Um, mm. It lifts me. I would rather I would rather sing than speak. I'd rather sing this entire podcast, but y'all would turn me off. Um, and so, um, but to that end, I'm going to turn you off. Um, I just listened. Say it again. I said I would not turn you off. I would just listen. You would just listen. Okay. Well, some somebody would uh, would would probably be like, you know what, this singing podcast may not be for me. Let's go back to you know. <laughs> Uh, but what I do know is that I, I do love uh, singing more than than many things. And, of course, you know, uh, some of my tools of self-love and acceptance are, you know, is the music, um, both instrumental and, and vocally. Um, I love cooking. For those of you who uh, are friends with me on Instagram, at Andre in the Flow, You'll see both on there tons of stuff about Love City, tons of my antics around New York City, but also tons of pictures of food. Um, I love, there's something so therapeutic for me about putting on a good, you know, I listen to other podca podcasts and other, you know, teaching tapes and things like that. Putting on a good podcast, putting on a good teaching tape, chopping my onions, chopping my carrots, chopping, chopping my celery, mashing my potatoes. All these things kind of allow me to self love and nourishing food for my body, but also gives me a little downtime to unplug from my day job on stuff and unplug from podcast stuff and kind of just really accept the, the present moment as it is uh, and the gift of what it is um, and just allow myself to, you know, to cook some yummy food. Uh, mm -hmm. That's one of my tools. The cooking is one of my tools. The singing is one of my tools. I'm having a really uplifting conversation. I cannot... Um, you know, stress it enough. You know, our listeners today are getting a small sliver of the depth of how deep your and I conversations actually go. Um, being able to text or call someone in your life that you know loves you unconditionally and is looking out for your best interest and has your back, that is one of my tools of self-love and acceptance. I love myself enough to reach out to those who love me and to you know, sometimes have, you know, tough conversations. I had a rough day. Uh, you know, this person dumped me. Uh, my boss uh, is, you know, acting out. You know, we all have, uh, you know, that in our lives. Um, you know, maybe you have a perfect boss, um, but someone in your job is acting all the way out. Um, that's the way that av the law of averages goes. And being able to lean on each other um, yeah. is one of the best gifts that one can give. Um, you know, there's a wonderful story called, uh, and I don't, I don't know which tradition it's from, but uh, it's the story of a hungry ghost. And if you get an opportunity, listeners, please Google this, hungry ghost. It is uh, the story of a bunch of ghosts sitting around a banquet table, and the banquet table, um, as we come up on Thanksgiving, so I, I you know, because I love me some good Thanksgiving a good Thanksgiving spread, if you will. 
Um, yeah. And so, th- so this table has mashed potatoes and gravy, mac and cheese, you know, turkey and ham. I mean, th- this banquet feast has everything that you can imagine on the table. And there's a bunch of ghosts sitting around this table in front of all of this food, and they're all hungry. And the reason why they're all hungry is because from their shoulder socket to where their palm would be, it's a long handled spoon. So imagine instead of your arm, it's a long, long, long handled straight spoon. Um, and they just have spoons for arms. Okay, so bear with me if you, if you are following and still tracking with me and I'm not like lost you with my woo-woo stuff. There are ghosts sitting around a banquet table that's full of food with spoons for arms. And they're all hungry. And so the, the parable or the koan or the message of this story is why are they all hungry? It's because because they have spoons for arms, they have super long spoons for arms, they can't get the tip of the spoon. They can scoop the food up, but they can't get the tip of the spoon to their mouths because it's too long. Um, and so the moral of the story is the only way for the hungry ghost to get fed at that banquet it's table to feed each other. is to feed each other. Yes. Absolutely. And so this is a metaphor for life. You know, um, if we didn't have each other uh, and the people that we love in our lives and the people that admire us and we admire them back, if we did not have these strong, uh, open and honest and vulnerable relationships, we would be hungry. Um, it's such a, a misnomer, if that's the right word, in our society that we're so we're so we're somehow supposed to be self-sufficient and self-sustaining, and um, you know, pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, do it by yourself, bend for yourself, make it happen. Um, and that's not the way I feel that the divine set everything up. It's almost as if the divine built in this like this missing puzzle piece. I'm literally to use that, that, that visual, but it's almost like your picture is completely perfect um, and perfectly perfect, but it's got a couple of slots missing, a couple puzzle pieces missing. And those puzzle pieces can only be provided by people outside of yourself. Know the voices in your head do not count. These are just the the people around you who feed you and uh, just lift you up. And so I just have to thank you publicly on this third part of your series uh, as we introduce Love to the Arts podcast to the world. I have to thank you for being that rock to me, G, and for, oh. you know, returning the crazy texts and returning the crazy phone calls. and being there for the ups and the downs, um, you are definitely, um, and I hate saying it this way because you're not a tool, I'm not using you, but you're definitely one of my uh, aces um, on my path to self-love and acceptance. And so I just want to thank you. I'm kind because don't do me. <laughs> Why you do me like did I just play, this? Did I just play you on this podcast? <laughs> yes, because... First of all, we just had this conversation because you equally pour back into me. You know what I mean? When I am not feeling my best and um, you've always known me for being the strong cousin, the one that's always fighting for you. And um, um, this year I've finally become a little bit more vulnerable um, and let you witness it. And um, you've actually helped me. <laughs> and I'm up here tearing up because you, you put me on this spot. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, you know, so um, my love is for real. And uh, and putting you on the spot, as you know, is also real. I um, I called Jean up and was like, hey, you want to do this song at the, at the Healing Gathering? And she's like, oh, okay, let's go. So. Level around. Do you have anything to share um, with our listeners before we sign off for this episode? Go to the music. That's what I want to tell people. Music will heal you. 
in a world where we're living in right now, um, where everything is so destructive and set up to where you um, just, it, everything is set up to where you are just thinking about negative things, but music will heal. That's what I want to leave people with. Music has saved my life on countless numbers over and over again. It's led me to dancing. It's led me to self-healing. Music is the key. Music will heal. And speaking of music, we're going to have tons of awesome music at our next Love City Arts Healing Gathering. Um, Tons of singing, tons of instrumental music, dancing, and lots of joy to be shared. Our next healing gathering is coming up. I think we'll probably ep- this uh, episode will air a couple days prior, November 19th. Our next healing gathering is November 19th at St. John's Lutheran Church at 6 p.m. That's in the West Village of New York City. And just to let you know, there will also be replays on andreandtheflow.com and lovecityarts.org. So if you're not in New York City or you can't make it that night because you've got other commitments, I know a couple people reached out to me and said that they had tickets to other events and other places to be. Fear not, because we will be recording um, the healing gathering in high definition and sharing it with the world. Um, These gatherings are always free, um, have always been free, and will always be free to the community, and that includes um, the replays. That's at St. John's Lutheran Church, November 19th at 6 p.m., and refreshments will be provided. I'll be giving out free hugs and free smiles after the event. So if you've listened to the podcast and and are coming to the event, through the podcast. I would love to meet you there. Jean will be performing. We're going to be doing a uh, surprise song for you that I won't give away on the podcast, but it's going to be something that you won't want to miss. And also, absolutely, uh, not. absolutely not. And speaking of which, um, all of our love to the artists, um, including Jean Lachey Ellis, um, all of their profiles are now live on lovetothearts.org. And so if you want to read about our artists, including Jean Lachey, you can also see videos of our previous gatherings um, just to check out our vibe and what we're all about and to hear more about the collective. Please visit lovecityarts.org. This Love City Arts podcast, finally, um, is broadcast roughly every week or so in all the spaces of where you listen to your podcast. And as I said at the very top, we're now available on SoundCloud, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, Apple Podcasts, and the Overcast app. We're covering all of our bases make sure that we spread love around the world. And if you are a active listener, feel free to subscribe, uh, especially on Apple Podcasts, and leave us a rating and leave us a comment. Let us know what we're doing well and what we can do better. We are on our third episode now and would love to improve upon bringing love through the arts to uh, anyone who is in need. I uh, will re-state uh, our question of the week for our Love City podcast hotline, which is at 404-585-1278. I want to know, where do you source your love? Same question from last week's episode. Where do you source your love? Where do you find love? Leave me a message on the Love City Art Podcast hotline at 404-585-1278. Once again, 404-585-1278. Where do you source your love? And also, I'm very curious to know, what music is uplifting you. Um, leave your comments on the hotline and perhaps they'll show up on the Love City blog. Well, I'm Andre in the flow. Do you, you have a song coming up for you? Yep. Every time my hotline blings. <laughs> oh, Lord. And that's, and that's Jeannie's Wanderlust over there uh, on that end of the line. And we hope that you all have a great week. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Love City Arts Podcast today. For more information, to follow my journey and the journey of all of our artists, visit andreintheflow.com and lovecityarts.org. Thanks again for listening.